Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals, which I have prospected across the United States and some other countries, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. Please support my channel on Patreon so I can bring more videos to, your, to you as you like. On Patreon, type in my name, Frank Reiser, M period, S period, and I appreciate your financial support. Today, I wish to talk about quantum mechanics without all the math, and hopefully this will be easy to understand for teenagers and adults. So let's get to the video. This is a model of the atom. The atom has a nucleus that consists of a neutron and a proton. Orbiting the atom of the nucleus of the atom is the electron. The electron, the proton, and the neutron are subatomic particles. They are smaller than the atom. They are constituents of the atom. An atom absorbs energy in the form of an electromagnetic wave, such as infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray. I'll talk about the electromagnetic spectrum in another video. Just understand that the electromagnetic spectrum consists of an another energy particle which we'll discuss today the photon the photon is a subatomic particle it is a boson it's a gauge boson that is responsible for carrying the electromagnetic force the electron is negatively charged it flows as a current in electronics electronics cannot be could not have been invented without quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is responsible for the whole field of electrons and electrical engineering. If you want to know what quantum mechanics is and feels like, always remember that your whole body, including all your brain cells, consists of subatomic particles, particles of quantum mechanics. Let's get back to the video. The electron receives energy. That energy that it received causes the electron to become activated. It gives energy to that electron and the electron jumps to a higher energy orbital state. Once it does that, it then reverses back to its original state, its more stable state, giving off electromagnetic energy. And then here's a model of the atom with the electron in its ground state. In the atom, the protons and the neutrons are held together by these purple circles representing gluons. Gluons are another subatomic particle described by quantum mechanics. There are three gluons in each proton and three gluons in each neutron. The gluons are up and down uh, subatomic particles, which I will describe soon. The electron orbits that nucleus. Atoms also consist, the protons and neutrons themselves consist are held together by the gluons. In addition to the protons themselves being held together by gluons and the neutrons themselves being held together by gluons. So there's gluons and then 
proton and gluons in the neutron gluons and the neutrons and gluons holding the neutrons and protons together. Here are the subatomic particles. This is the standard model of quantum mechanics. We have fermions. Fermions consist fermions consist of the quarks and the leptons. The quarks, of which there are six, consist of the up quark, the down quark, the um, top quark, the bottom quark, the strange quark, and the charm quark. Those are the quarks. Other fermions are the leptons. The leptons. The leptons consist of the electron, the muon, the tau, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Gauge bosons consist of the gluons, the photon, the photons of light in the electromagnetic spectrum, the weak nuclear force particles called the W and the Z, or Z particles, and the theoretical graviton. The graviton is theoretical because it has never been observed. In order to observe the graviton, we would need a particle accelerator much larger than Fermilab. We need a particle accelerator the size of the orbiting planet of Jupiter around the Earth. The what I mean to say is the orbit of the orbit of Jupiter, that circumference would have to be the circumference of the particle accelerator in order to have enough energy to smash subatomic particles together to observe the graviton. Gravity is the weakest force of all. The other particle, which became a celebrity in, 19, in, 19, in 2012 when it was discovered, is the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is what is responsible for giving the other particles their mass. The Higgs boson creates what is known as the Higgs field. When other particles, such as the quarks, the leptons, and the gauge bosons, interact with the Higgs field, the Higgs field gives these subatomic particles their mass. Superposition. Superposition theory. In superposition theory, an electron or a photon is in a state that is not contained. It is found everywhere at the same time within that state when it's not measured by an experiment. What I'm saying is, an electron has a probability of being anywhere inside an orbital around an electron, around an atom, at the same time. A hard concept to understand. However, when we measure it by experiment, we find that the um, superposition collapses and the electron, or the photon, is observed in only one location at once at that time of being measured. The double slit experiment. In 1801, Thomas Young used electrons through a barrier and look at it on a plate for the pattern that it would produce. This diagram represents a laser of light being shined at a double slit. A double slit such as this slide and a laser beam that you can buy, such as this pen laser. You can buy both the double slit and the pen laser off eBay or Amazon. I got my double slit off Amazon. That's why I appreciate your contributions at Patreon so I can buy more stuff to show you. I'll do a demonstration on Thomas Young's double slit experiment in another video.
There'll be a demonstration, not a lecture, like I'm lecturing now, so you may find that more entertaining. When Thomas Young aimed a laser beam at the back plate, the experimental observation plate, through the double slit experiment, he found that the photons of light, or the electrons rather, I'm going to do mine of using the laser beam so it will be photons of light, Thomas Young's electrons, and the demonstration will be the same using the photons of light through the, with the laser beam, that when they were not measured, they formed two regions, they activated two regions of the experimental plate behind the double slit. Logically, as we would think, if we were using baseballs and throwing them through this double slit, we would say, obviously, the particles or the baseballs would be found behind the double slit on the plate, only in two rows where the light could get through, or the electrons could get through in Thomas Young's experiment. But that was not the case. We found that when the light was aimed through the double slit, it formed what's called a diffraction pattern. The diffraction pattern shows that there is a large probability or chance that the electrons, in my experiment will be photons, the results are the same, occur behind the plate where electrons should not have been able to have gone through. And then they form more lines in the diffraction pattern. This is because light has wave-like properties in addition to particle-like properties. With the wave picture, we have straight lines of x-rays in Thomas Young's experiment, or photons with my laser experiment, which has coherent light. This only works for coherent light, or light that comes from a laser beam, not an incandescent light bulb. The waves pass through the double slit in such a way that they form wave-like patterns. These patterns interfere with each other and form areas where there's zero absorbance of light or x-rays, I mean, or ele electrons on a plate, and areas where the waves reinforce each other coming through each separate slit of the double slit, where they reinforce each other, forming the pattern of these green bands on the plate, the experimental observation plate. Quantum tunneling. In quantum tunneling, we find that a particle sometimes can transport or be found or can pass through a barrier that it should not be able to. This diagram shows a quantum particle transporting through or traveling through a barrier that it's not supposed to be able to get through to the other side of the barrier. This doesn't happen frequently, but it does happen. And these experiments have been verified multiple times with quantum mechanics experiments. For example, a proton and another proton in a star, such as our Sun, can trans be transported past their positive charges of repulsion and connect to each other when they contact each other and be held together by gluons through the barrier of that high positive repulsive charge. You add two electrons and you get fusion and a hydrogen atom in the star. Later on in the fusion process, these hydrogen atoms react together with each other to form helium ions, or atoms. Then later on in the star's life, more fuel is used from helium to form the heavier elements. Quantum Entanglement Quantum Entanglement Two particles can become entangled when they are together with each other, which means that the state of one, such as the up character, the spin, the spin of one, is 
tied to the spin of the other. These particles can be separated by long distances, such as between Earth and Mars, and still, if the particle here on the left is being not observed, we don't know what its spin is. But once we observe it experimentally, we'll know it's spin up. This will cause the other particle to immediately, immediately be observed to be spin down over a great long distance, which is unusual because Einstein said that nothing travels faster than the speed of light. Yet when observed, one particle spin is immediately known and it's tangled to the other particle spin, which becomes immediately known. It's like there's communication between these two, two particles over a great distance. That's quantum entanglement. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Always reminding you to find those beautiful rocks and minerals to keep looking down.